Hi, my name is Kent C. Dodds, and I am the owner and maintainer of Angular Formly. And we're going to quickly talk about how you can contribute to Angular Formly by reporting issues. So the issue tracker is for issues, not questions. Um, if you're curious about how you can ask a question uh, from somebody who knows about Angular Formly, then I've got another video that you can watch about that. This is about um, uh, reporting bugs or uh, feature requests. So here in the um, GitHub repo, there's the issue tracker. And this is where you ask for feature requests or, um, or report an issue. So you simply click new issue, and then you'll see this please review guides for contributing. So go to that. Um, and here, this uh, explains how you ask a question and then issues. So if you find an issue, then you submit it with um, in the issues with a link to a JSPIN that de demonstrates the issue. And you can clone a template that um, you can use to demonstrate that issue. So uh, let's say you, you find some sort of issue with a custom type. And so you um, let's say if you provide both a template and a template URL, then something happens. And actually, um, Angular formally handles this and will let you know, hey, that's that, that's not allowed. And you'll see that in the console. But if that were the problem, then uh, you would demonstrate it here. And um, well, actually, sorry. First, you will uh, clone this um, this JS bin so that it's your very own. Uh, and then you'll create a template, you know, whatever um, some wh whatever could reproduce your issue. And then inside of the HTML, um, you'll have the uh, bug reproduction instructions right here. So uh, put the instructions right there on how you reproduce the bug by using the, the form um, or have some console logs or something, anything that you feel like could be useful. Um, up, uh, and when you report the issue, come back here and add your issue number there. So I have a link to the issue. And um, yeah, that's it. So um, having this is a million times um, more helpful than just having some text inside of uh, the issue. So that is extremely, extremely helpful. So then you'll create your new issue, you'll give it a useful title uh, that describes the problem, and you'll give a link to the JS bin and any other description that you like. But most of the issue information should be inside of the JS bin. Even better than just simply submitting an issue is if you can um, write a test to reproduce the, the problem as well as your JS bin. So um, there's a fantastic example of uh, somebody who did this uh, failing test. We'll find this in the issues. And here's a perfect example of an issue. So there is no JS bin for this. Um, please create a, a JS bin. But this is um, as good, if not better, actually, it is better. Um, then even a, a JS bin is having a failing test right in here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be some example. And so here he's using compile and digest. And that's actually a, a function that's available in, in the test for formally. So if you want to see or, or even just look at the test and give me an almost working test, or a, rather a test that, that should pass, then you simply go to the code and go to source directives and your issue could be with the formally form or the formally field and you'll find a test there so we'll go to formally form and then you'll see a bunch of describes and it's we're using mocha with uh, chai using expect uh, expect and so you'll simply say oh there's a problem with remove uh, chrome autocomplete so my test would go right here and it would look like this and you would put that example um, inside your issue so even better than this would be a pull request, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, having a test right in your issue is fantastic, uh, really fantastic, and, and helps me address the issue much quicker. But if nothing else, if, if that's a little too daunting for you, uh, JS bin is very, very helpful still. And uh, so please do that. So in quick review, um, you simply go to issues, create a new issue, read the guidelines for contributing the issues piece, and uh, you clone that template, you create, uh, you reproduce the issue, and you add a link to that JS bin inside of your new issue in here. And if you're feeling ambitious and really helpful, then uh, you will add a failing test in your issue or an example of a failing test 
um, and that will help me address the issue much faster. And again, finally, the issue tracker is not for questions. There are a couple of other resources for that, and I have a video um, uh, about how you ask questions for Angular Formula. Issue tracker is for feature requests and bug reports, and that's uh, how you report issues with Angular Formula.